What is happening guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So if you've seen by the thumbnail and the title, we're doing a little bit more on the Caddy Project. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will notice that this wing is back being white again. So yeah, I binned off the pattern part, wasn't happy with the way it fitted at all. Managed to get hold of a salvage part from a breakers on eBay. Um, I think I paid 65 quid delivered, which I didn't think was too bad. Now the even more eagle-eyed viewers will notice it's not got a hole in it for the indicator. Now that is because this is for a Turan. Now the reason it's for a Turan is because it was cheaper than buying a Caddy one. So yeah, we've got no hole for the indicator. Not a problem. I'll have to weld the hole up on the passenger side wing um, because we're going to be putting the Turan mirrors on this, which have got indicators built into them. So I'm not really sure where or what to do next or how to get on with this project in general. Um, but in my mind, the best thing to do, or the starting point, is going to be to remove this section of floor so we can put the rear seat conversion in. So started having a bit of a go at this. Obviously, the loom goes through it there, so you've got to be careful. But the spot welds along here, which I've just got a spot weld drill bit for. Yes, my drill's seen better days. The chuck broke. Uh, I've got a spot weld drill bit for um, and started doing those. So I'm just going to chuck the camera on the tripod and just, yeah, continue to try and get this out and see how easy it is. I've never even seen a video of anyone doing it, so who knows, let's give it a go. There's that out then. So camera died, so apologies, but there's this bracket here at the front, which goes to the floor here, which is looks like it's it's welded to the chassis and it's also spot welded to this. So the easiest way I did that was I just folded this up and got the grinder in there quickly and just cut through that. And then you have to get the grinder and cut these holes here where the cables go through. You just have to cut them to be able to get the cables out as well. Uh, but yeah, a hell of a lot easier than I expected to get out. Um, I had read somewhere that people spend hours trying to get these out, but it was it, it probably took less than 10 minutes. It really wasn't difficult at all. So you've got a series of spot weld holes down this back edge, a series of spot weld holes on either end, and then these brackets here, see this black bit here, they're bonded, just bonded, they're not welded, they're just bonded to the uh, back of the A pillar. That bracket in the middle, and it comes straight out, yeah. Not anywhere near as difficult as I expected that one to be. Now that's removed, we've got the footwell space for us to be able to put these rear seats in. So next thing to do is we're going to jump in the Turan and make a start on getting those brackets out. Now I imagine they are going to be a hell of a lot more difficult to get out because there's more and there were seat anchorings, not just a piece of flooring. So let's go give it a go. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go then, after a lot of wrestling, two blunted um, spot weld drill bits and a lot of swearing and a lot of hammering, the front and rear brackets are now out. Now, if you're anything like me, I wondered what the chassis looked like when you'd cut them out, so I'll show you. So rear one, nothing at all, that's just sort of spot welded onto the top. Now this bottom one, you've got three pieces of floor that come together here. You've got this front tub, the obviously the rear seat base, and then the part we've just taken off, which all meet there. So I've just gone through with a grinder and cut most of it away, um, or the front edge of it away, and then drilled it and just got the part out that I need. Now I imagine there's loads of different ways of doing it, but that's the way that I've done it. It is gonna need a bit of a bit of trim and a tidy up um, to fit into the van. But as far as I know, you need that lip to be able to weld it to the bottom where it goes in the van. So I think next thing's gonna be, I'll clean all this mastic off here, and then we'll start offering the front one in because the front one needs trimming. I think what we have to do is cut some of this area away here to enable it to fit because it obviously this part comes in quite a lot. So I think where that's flat, it will still work. Don't quote me on that, but we'll try it. Right guys, I didn't film any of me cutting and messing around with this because there was a lot of is this right, is that right, try this, try that, try that, keep trying in and out. So yeah, I didn't film any of it, but let me show you what I've done to the bracket and how I've got this to fit and where I've trimmed it. So starting on this end, I'll get a picture of what it was before and I'll put it up here so you can see a comparison. I've cut quite a lot of this away um, on the end. I've done the same to the other side as well. Just can't really see it because it's against a wall. Um, now the reason for this is to be able to get the side step and things in as far as I'm aware. From the pictures I've seen online, this is what pretty much most people have done. Um, so that's that end all trimmed and cut so that it fits. I've also sorted this out. So you see this circle here, there's one there and there's one over there as well. Now on there, there's three uh, nut inserts, which are for, from the terrain, I think it's the two middle ones are to hold the exhaust hanger. And I think it's to hold the fuel tank in as well, the fuel tank straps. So we don't need them in there. So all I did was got a hole saw, uh, just a bit bigger. Drilled, obviously used this drill in the thread, drilled that through, hole saw to get rid of that nut so we don't need it. And I've also trimmed this to fit where all these pieces of metal come together, otherwise it was sitting up too high. I've also here, the seam sealer that is pretty much across most of it. Now I've cleaned all that back down to metal, same up here, and I've primed it all in weld through primer so we can get this bit welded in. So that's how I've trimmed that. Now the back piece, we're not really gonna worry about that at the minute. I'm gonna get this piece tacked in with four or five tacks. We'll then get the seat and clip the seat on. We can clip it onto the back piece and get this somewhere in the right place where it needs to be. Mark the floor where the spot welds are, clean the paint back, a little bit of weld through primer, and we can then get that welded in. So hopefully that's in the right place and hopefully it clears up if anyone's got any questions of how or where this goes and how you're trimming things because there's not really a lot about it online. Um, that's how I've done it. It looks as though it's in the right place. I thought before I went welding anything in, I'd just grab um, one of these seats out uh, and try and clip it in. And yeah, where everything was just sat where I thought it went, it clipped straight in. So yeah, they fit, they're in the right place. So let's fire up the welder, tack this front bit in, and we can work on getting the back bit tacked in. Now if you didn't faff as much as I do, this would be a pretty quick job. Rolling the neatest welds, but it's welded in. That's that front one tacked into place. Now let's work out where this rear bracket wants to go. Clear some of the paint back, get that one tacked in, and then we'll get this all welded up and call that job done. Go then this is i've obviously gone over with the grinder and ground paint back to metal there and gone over it with weld through primer i think i put the clips in i've um obviously had the seats in to get this in a rough place to work out where it wanted to go i've also then gone back over and trimmed a few choice pieces of this to make it fit uh as you can see there i've put a little niche around this that with an X, you can see that there, it's got an X on it. So on the back of here, 
you've got these bits of metal that stick up. I've just trimmed that one down ever so slightly, and there's one the other end as well. Um, that mean ooh, that this will sit down in the correct place, down to the floor. And the reason I had to trim it is for bits like where these ribs are. So I'll take you in there. So the reason I had to trim it is bits like this. Obviously, if this was square, it was still touching here. This one here, where it was sat, was about touching on this rib. There was one the other end, that one. And then we've had to do little little nibbles out of it in different places as well. One, what's that one? That? I don't want to go there. Let's go about there it goes. And that, that one there as well. So what I'll do now is I'll grab the seats again, probably clip the two end seats in, push and pull everything about in the right place, and then we'll get some tacks in this piece. And that's that bit in as well. So, what I'm going to do now is go around and weld it all so that we know it's all welded in and isn't going anywhere. And then we'll look at chucking the carpets in, the rear carpets, and we'll start having a look at trimming these side trims. There we are then, guys. These are in, all nice and tight. I have had a bit of a lever bar around them just to check the welds are okay, and yeah, they're in, they're not going anywhere. I've had the seats in and out a couple of times as well just to check everything works. So the next thing to do is to start putting the trims around these that came out of the car, making them, well, adapting them to fit into the caddy. First thing I'm going to do, we'll chuck the carpets in now. None of this is staying in, it is all coming out again. This is just purely sort of for this video and to um, see how it's all going to go. So we've got all the front cabs of the dash still to come out, but we'll put these rear carpets in, this rear carpet here, and we'll start putting the trims on and see what we've got to cut. I don't know if you can see that, but this rear carpet is only going to be usable to a point because the floor in the terrain obviously tapers off and this is wobbling. So we will have to cut this, but for now we'll leave it whole just so we can gauge on what's going on. These trims that hook on this front edge. Now I need to get this side piece fitting and it looks as though we've got to do a bit of trimming on the inside and then we'll have to do a little bit on the outside. So I'll trim these off first. See if that helps. I think it has. Now we're just hitting on the bottom here. So let's start cutting bits off of this. Right, what I've tried to do is not trim too much off of this plastic um, and we've stuck the side step back in that was in when it was a van. Now, I'm it, it looks crap, basically. So I need to get hold of the Maxi Life panel. But we've got something in temporarily, so now I'll jump in, I'll cut the other side, which should be a hell of a lot quicker. Right, now that them trims are all in, it's acceptable for now. We need to try and still get hold of this new panel, but they're in for now to a point that's acceptable, I think. Next thing to look at is the seat belts. And as you can see here, I've already got this one fitted and I've already got this one fitted as well. Now, what I've done um, is use the rear seat belts out of the Turan. So this, this one on the driver's side, this one goes straight into this opening and bolts in with the factory bolt and there's a thread in the reel. This top one then, there is, um, there's a hole in this panel already and you have a spreader plate which I'll put a picture in now because I forgot to take a picture of them or film it while I was doing it. That one you can get your arm up that hole to hold it in place, put this fixing in to hold it in place and then I just drilled through and then I've put a rivet to hold it in place for when you ever undo that, it won't fall out. Coming down to the bottom then, I was struggling with a way of that I'd be happy with of mounting these um, the lower points. So what I've done is I've gone through the wheel arch. Now where the arch liner goes, there's a bit of a void behind it. 
Same principle again, held the bracket there, put this bolt in to hold that into position, drilled a hole, riveted it on. So now if you undo that, the bracket won't fall off. And then pretty much the same this side. So we've got it bolted into the arch at the bottom there, in the factory hole there with the bracket behind it. Now down here, most people, you have to turn, well, you, you really should mount this the opposite way around. So the reel's all outside. Now I've managed through a bit of hammering, a bit of grinding and a bit of cutting um, to get this to fit inside there. So there's a piece of metal that comes around on the inside. I've cut most of that away um, and then I have actually shaved the corner of the reel. Now, it doesn't affect it in any way, it still works um, to make it fit. So yeah, bolt in there, holding it all together. So that's how I've mounted the two side belts. And now for the middle belt, we're going to use the factory Turan belt with this brace which comes from the roof of the Turan. So you've got one, two, three, four bolts that bolt it up into the Turan. Um, there's obviously no fixings here for that. And the reel mounts to sort of the back of the body of the car. So there's nowhere to mount the reel to. So what I've done is offered this up into the van. I've had to trim a little bit around there to be able to get it to fit around this piece. I've also offered the reel in, the one that was in it originally, um, and worked out where it wanted to go, drilled a hole and I've welded a thread on from the back so that reel will then go on and we'll be able to bolt it on there. The belt will go through through those two slots and it'll all mount and it'll drop down as it should do and hopefully work as it should do. Now what I've got to do with this is weld it in. I've just offered it back in so I'm going to quickly buzz over it with some weld through primer on the van um, and then we'll get it clamped back up and get this bit welded in. And that should be about seat conversion done. There's that top bracket in then. So we've welded it at that end. We've welded it at the back, if you can call that welding. It's in, it's strong. Um, this is obviously bolted on by that nut at the bolt at the back that I did. Does what it should do. Just got to, obviously, we're going to have to build a box to box that in. And then this bit, we'll just have to try and uh, cut the hole in the right place and trim that cover. Now you have it. Three trans seats mounted in the caddy and all usable. Still a bit of finishing off today, but yeah, there we go, they're in and working. Show you from the back. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that, to be honest. It's taking me a hell of a lot longer than it would do someone that knows what they're doing, but they're in, usable, need a bit of a clean, but looking good, um, and it's what I wanted fitted in the back of the van. Hopefully this video is helpful to you guys as well, because I know when I was searching online for this job or mod if you like there wasn't really a lot of information out there there was a few broken threads and i'd pieced together a bit of an idea through probably seven or eight different threads um, now this is not by any means an ex exact step by step how to but i think it gives you a bit of an idea of what's what and a bit of an outline hopefully it's given you the majority of the information that you'd need to be able to do this so i'll put a link in the description to the brackets i've used for um the top point and bottom point of the seat belts on both sides they were from transport hq so big thanks to those guys for helping me out with those um i've actually found the code for this step that i was talking about earlier in the video um spoke to tps and volkswagen and both said that they don't make it anymore and it is an obsolete product and you can't get it hold of it from the manufacturer so, I've spoke to a couple of breakers and no one seems to have one, but I will be keeping my eye out and keeping in touch with a few. Um, but if anyone knows where I can get the Caddy Life, Maxi Life, whatever it is, sidestep for a sliding door for the passenger side and the non-sliding door panel or step or whatever it is for the driver's side, yeah, drop me a comment, drop me a DM. Um, I could do with those two to finish it off. It'd be very much appreciated. So if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, or even if you've not, do please consider clicking subscribe and press that little bell to get a notification of when we post a new video. Please give the video a like, drop us a comment as well. It all massively helps within YouTube's algorithm. I do really appreciate the engagement as well. I'm struggling to reply to every single comment. I sat there for nearly five hours replying to comments the other day. I do read every single one and I will react to every single one. If I don't comment back, I apologise. It isn't personal. There's just a lot to get through. So we'll leave that on there then, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, enjoy.